Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're finally taking a look at the Voyo X3 Mini PC. A lot of people have been writing in about this one. Very nice unit, actually, uh, and not a bad price either. So this is a uh, Mini PC running with an Atom Cherry Trail processor, but unlike many of the other Cherry Trail devices we've looked at, like the Kangaroo PC, uh, this one has the X7 version of that chip, so it's slightly faster than you might see out of the Kangaroo. In fact, it has the same chip as the Microsoft Surface 3. Not the Pro 3, but the Surface 3. Uh, the same chip is in here uh, for $215. That's the price that I paid for it uh, on uh, geekbuying.com, I believe, is where I got mine from. In full disclosure, I have no relationship with this company. never even heard of them before. Uh, so nobody is paying for this review, and everything you're about to see here is my opinion and my opinion alone, and I purchased this with my own funds for you to see today. So uh, what this reminds me of, actually, is the first-generation Apple TV. It's like what this design would have been like had they uh, kept that look over a long period of time. It's got a nice aluminum base here. Uh, this is the gold color. There's a few other colors available, and the top is glass. So it's really nicely built, uh, very compact, no ventilation to speak of, but it hasn't gotten all that hot either, which is surprising. I don't know if maybe it's uh, running the heat through the metal base here to uh, dissipate it out, or maybe it's doing some thermal uh, adjustments of the processor over time. But it seems to be performing very well and I haven't had any real issues with it. Uh, so you have your power button up front. We're going to boot it up in a minute. A USB 2.0 spot here on the front. I plug my keyboard and mouse into that one there. On the back, you've got USB-C, but that is how this is powered. So I don't know if this is carrying data or not because I don't have something that can do power and data at the moment that works with this. So uh, we're going to assume perhaps just for power because that's the uh, power cord they give you with it. A micro HDMI connector there, or maybe a mini HDMI connector for uh, connecting to your monitor. They do give you a cable in the box in case you don't have one of those smaller HDMI cables. Uh, SD card slot, a micro SD card slot there. Two USB 3.0 slots and a headphone microphone jack over there and then nothing on this side. What's interesting about this is that uh, this has four gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabyte SSD built in. So it's got a lot of storage, a lot of RAM for a very reasonable price. And the good news is too that this is a fully licensed version of Windows too. Unlike some of the other uh, mini PCs we've imported from China recently, this one is actually legit. But there is a caveat to that and I'll explain when we boot it up. So what I'm gonna do now is get everything hooked up to this thing. We're gonna turn it on and see how it works. All right, I've got all my stuff plugged in. This is the dongle for my little Logitech keyboard here. And uh, you'll notice though that the power light is on but the computer is actually off. And there's actually no way to know when this thing is on and when it's off by its power light here. So I'm gonna push the button uh, and that will start the boot up process here. But uh, you never actually know when this thing is on or off short of looking out on screen to see if it has actually uh, been booted up here. So so we'll get a sense as to how fast that uh, SSD will load up Windows. I will do a, a disk benchmark for you in a minute so you can see how that works. Now I want you to notice something here as we're logging in. Uh, we're going to get a Voyo user that logs in without a password automatically. This is how it came. It didn't have uh, any you know, setup procedure for going in and actually setting up your own username or anything like uh, most new Windows PCs would do. Now the good news is, is that Windows is fully licensed on here and, and it's activated so it's all legit as far as Microsoft is concerned. That's a plus. However, what they They've done in the creation of it looks like like a drive image that they just kind of copied to every PC they made uh, with this unpassworded user. Uh, they also disabled user account control. Now it's very easy to turn UAC back on, but it's off. And if you don't know what user account control is, uh, you probably have seen it before. That when you go to install something and it's and it asks you to approve that uh, process, this doesn't ask you. When you load up something that uh, requires UAC, as I'll do with malware bytes here. Uh, it won't ask you, you to actually elevate the privileges of the application. It just loads it up and you're off and running. So you definitely want to make sure that, I think actually, uh, to go into the recovery section of the control panel and just start over again. Wipe it out, do a recovery and a fresh install uh, so you start from scratch because it's really a little uh, scary to have a machine that's already configured with a user uh, that has completely elevated pr uh, privileges and you have no idea where this came from. I did run a bunch of malware and virus checks on it and everything and it seems to be okay, but you never know, there could be, who knows what's on this thing and, and, uh, and what could be lurking underneath the surface there. So you definitely want to be careful about that. Uh, one other thing that I noticed with this is that uh, the Wi-Fi that is built in, and for some reason it's not showing up on our control panel at the moment, uh, the built-in Wi-Fi on here, although it says it supports 5 gigahertz networks, this one doesn't. It's 2.4 gigahertz only, wireless N only. It's not wireless AC. So while they packed in a lot of great stuff in here, including that uh, large amount of RAM and a uh, large amount of storage, they are not including wireless AC, which is something you'd expect from a premium, quote-unquote, uh, mini 
PC. So there are a couple of gotchas here uh, coming into it, but what I have done with this one and what we'll be doing in this review uh, is using a USB to ethernet adapter. So at least we can do a bulk of our test, but just know that the wireless is going to be a little bit behind and the reception on it didn't seem all that great either. But it does perform well. We'll load up our Microsoft Word template here real quick and you can see how all this will scroll through as we're moving our way through the document. So it feels, you know, kind of about the same as the Kangaroo does with the same amount of RAM. I mean, it, may, it might be a little bit faster if we were to be able to benchmark Word somehow, but it does feel like it is a, a very solid machine for doing this stuff. What's amazing too, when you look at these new Cherry Trail processors is that they, they kind of hit that point where it's starting to feel like a regular PC and that you don't really feel like you're running with something uh, that costs $200 or less. It really is a nicely performing little computer here. So I'm pretty impressed with uh, just all the day-to-day -day tasks on it, which I think it will do quite well. And it also browses the web very well too. Again, a day-to-day -day kind of task should be uh, just fine on here. So we'll go visit my YouTube channel real quick as an example. So we'll get uh, an idea of how well it does streaming video as well as web page rendering. So here we are on my uh, YouTube channel homepage. And uh, there we go. The video has spun up and already started working already. I've got to change that uh, channel trailer soon. Uh, we'll go over to one of my latest videos here and just uh, see how well it does in its 1080p mode. So you can see again, those pages render in very quickly. Uh, the video really does start up pretty quick too. So very snappy and responsive here uh, out of this X7 processor. This is the Z8700 processor, by the way. Uh, so we are running at 1080p right now. We'll go load up our uh, stats for nerds, which will tell us if we're dropping any frames or not. And so far, so good. So a uh, pretty clean playback here. We can switch into full screen mode if we want to do that. Uh, not a problem at all. So it seems to be uh, working just fine actually as a little video playback device here. And I'm pretty uh, impressed with it. Really a decent performance here out of that. I have found on some websites that it will bog down a bit as those ads are coming in. So that's something that we've seen on all of these uh, lower end PCs that uh, when you really hit it with a lot of JavaScript, it tends to uh, slow it down a little bit. So you can see the New York Times loading up here with all the, the code in the background running in. Uh, the page is rendered, but we can't do anything yet until all this other junk shows up on here. Now on the Octane benchmark test, which measures how well it performs rendering web pages and running JavaScript in Google Chrome, we get a score of 8,423. And that actually compares higher than the Surface 3 that we looked at a couple of months ago. Now in fairness, they could have optimized Chrome in the, in the intervening months, but uh, never Nevertheless, it is faster, at least as far as I have tested it. It's also faster than the Kangaroo too, which uh, scored a little bit lower because it is running with the X5 chip versus the X7Z8700 in this one. So this one's got a slightly faster uh, Atom processor on board. Uh, but one thing to note though, is that the HP Stream Mini that we looked at last year is still much faster than any of these mini PCs uh, because it's running with a desktop Haswell processor. I don't think they, they make that one anymore, which is unfortunate because it's a very nicely performed mini PC, uh, but this one is performing the best out of the current crop that I've tested so far uh, because it has a lot of RAM and because it's got that uh, slightly faster Atom processor. So this is going to be faster on paper uh, than the Kangaroo PC we looked at, even the one with more memory. Now, one thing I was very impressed with for the price point here is the size of its SSD, the 128 gigabyte drive, uh, but also how well it performs. So you can see we're getting write speeds in the 190 megabyte per second territory here uh, and read speeds around 340 megabytes per second. So that is uh, a lot of performance and a lot of storage as compared to other $200 mini PCs. Many of them have uh, eMMC storage, which is slower. This one definitely appears to have a, a true SSD built in as well. I am not sure if it's upgradable. I might try to take it apart in a future video, but I would imagine it probably isn't, uh, but still to be able to get that much storage out of the box for a mini PC at around $200 uh, is a pretty good deal indeed. So now what we're gonna do is see uh, how this chip performs gaming with it. So we'll look at Minecraft. I'm gonna do Rocket League on this one also to see how uh, far we can push this Atom chip. Maybe a couple other things too. Let's have a look. Now one of the things these new Cherry Trail processors have really excelled at is playing Minecraft, especially the original version of Minecraft that we're running here. Now I run this version because this is the version that most people use. And you can see in the upper left-hand corner there, we're getting about 50 frames per second, 40 frames per second or so uh, as we're going through this world here. This is exceptional for a mini PC like this, especially a fanless one. So very uh, fast response here, uh, not too much lag as things are drawing in, a really good platform for running the original version of Minecraft. The Windows 10 edition will run better, uh, but most people run this one because of all the mods and everything else that usually run on this version that don't run yet 
on the Windows 10 one. Now I am running the Optifine Performance Enhancing plugin, which does give us a little bit of a performance boost here. So I would suggest installing that as well if you are planning to uh, run Minecraft on this little guy, but it really is uh, performing quite nicely. And it's interesting to see uh, how this is just you know, a little bit faster than the Kangaroo's uh, X5 processor. So this does have a little bit more oomph uh, to run things like Minecraft here. So here's Rocket League and I turned everything to performance and I turned off all the extra stuff and we're running at 1920 by 1080. I'm having some graphics issues uh, and I'm not able to get the frame rate up and I'm actually finding that this thing is freezing up on me sometimes even when I go to start a game. So uh, this is feeling a little buggy to me right now and we'll see if it gets past the loading screen here. Uh, before it didn't, it just kind of sat there for a while. So I'm going to let this run for a few minutes. If we're not able to get back into Rocket League, I will come back and tell you that it didn't work. All right, it got stuck on the loading screen and never loaded up. I did get it to load a few times before this glitch started happening with it. It wasn't running all that great, even with the settings turned down. So I think uh, modern games are kind of off the table here. I am noticing some glitchiness with this uh, related to gaming, especially when there's a full screen game and you try to pull up, uh, for example, like Steam's control panel to get the frame rates and stuff. Uh, even Minecraft was freezing when I exited Minecraft to try to get back out to the main menu. So there are some, there's some stuff going on here, I think with perhaps the Intel video drivers. I may reach out to Voyo and see if I can get some assistance with that. But I got a benchmark for you, if that helps. Uh, the 3DMark CloudGate benchmark, we get a score of 2,318, and that compares to 1,766 for the Kangaroo, which is running the X5 version of this generation of the Intel Cherry Trail chip. So it actually is, uh, at least on that test, uh, considerably faster than the Kangaroo is. It's not going to be fast enough, though, uh, to play anything modern on here. So Grand Theft Auto V and a bunch of other modern games are off the table, but uh, it is in, an improvement over the X5 chip, and it can do some things that you really can't do on a lot of other Atom-based $200 PCs. Uh, including here running the Dolphin GameCube emulator. Now, it's not going to be perfect emulation, but it's more perfect, uh, or closer to perfect, perhaps, than uh, we've seen on prior generations of the Atom chip. So we're running here Mario Sunshine. As you can see here, we're getting frame rates in the uh, 24 frames per second territory, give or take, uh, which isn't bad, especially considering it's usually considerably slower on other uh, Atom, uh, Bay Trail and Cherry Trail processor machines for that matter. So this is definitely moving uh, this very inexpensive chipset in a very interesting direction. This is both CPU and GPU intensive, and it's able to really uh, keep up here quite well. The music is a bit choppy on it, so it's not, again, it's not going to be perfect, but it is a lot better than it was before. So I think this gives you a good idea as to uh, really what its limitations are and what it can do, which, which is really pretty interesting. We're seeing things kind of creeping forward here uh, on the low end of the market. And we got one last thing to look at, and that is the home theater capabilities of the device. We're going to boot up Cody, do a little TV watching and some movie watching and see how it performs there. So I loaded up Cody here and we have it connected to my disk array in the basement where I store my big Blu-ray MKV files. These are Blu-ray movies I ripped right off the disk and are playing back at very high bit rates. And uh, we are connecting via Ethernet because remember that Wi-Fi really isn't cutting it for me without the AC wireless. So uh, we're going to load it up here. So you're going to see a little bit faster performance than you might out of uh, just the Wi-Fi connection. But it does spin these movies up very quickly. I can seek around uh, very fast as well here. So very impressive performance overall in the frame rate. Uh, has been keeping up just fine with these as well. So that is a good thing to see. However, if you are a home theater enthusiast, uh, you should know this does not support the high-end digital audio formats. And I actually was having some trouble getting some of the lower-end formats to function also. Uh, so that's DTS uh, HD, regular DTS, as well as Dolby Digital and Dolby True HD. Both of those formats uh, just didn't seem to pass through properly like other uh, devices tend to do. So I don't think they've licensed everything that they need to license. And I uh, really can't make a recommendation, unfortunately, on this one for home theater people because of that issue. And it's a shame, too, because it does perform very well. It is completely quiet, being that it's fanless. Uh, and it's also got some good emulation chops, too, for a home theater environment. But it doesn't support those pass-through things. And for me, that's a deal breaker uh, on home theater usage there. Let's skip out of here, though, real quick and look at uh, live TV watching, though. We'll go load up the HD. HD Home Run plugin, and I should tell you that uh, HD Home Run and Silicon Dust, the company that makes the HD Home Run, are sponsors of the channel from time to time. But uh, what this is is a live TV tuner that works with my cable system through uh, my network here using a device called the HD Home Run. You can check out my uh, series linked above to find out all about it. But you can see here it really does uh, the MPEG-2 playback quite well here at a really decent frame rate. So I'm pretty impressed with how that's working. But again, you're going to have some issues with uh, some of the movie playback on there. 
So that is the Voyo V3 Mini PC. I believe I inadvertently called it the X3 at the beginning of the review, so if I did, I'll just uh, put a little thing down below to correct that. But uh, I, I'm gonna say this is a recommendation, but it is at your own risk for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is that this thing is uh, coming equipped with a fully licensed version of Windows, but one where they put their own user on that has stripped away all of the security that uh, Windows tends to provide, especially the user access control. So I, my first recommendation when you get it is to just uh, reinstall Windows, whether through the recovery console or uh, downloading the image with the, uh, the image creation tool and just load up a fresh copy of Windows on it just to be safe. It should register properly with Microsoft because the hardware ID uh, should be up there in the Microsoft database. I did activate this uh, machine when I bought it, so I think we're uh, safe there. And I would definitely do that because who knows what they disabled on this thing and what kind of security risks you might find yourself at uh, because of whatever they did to get their user installed on here. So that's point one. Point two is that this company is located in China. So if you're not located in China or near China, uh, you might have some issues getting service and support on this that if you have to send it back, you may have to figure out a way to get it back to China uh, from wherever you might be, which is not always as easy as mailing it back to somewhere in the United States. So if you want something that performs a little bit slower but is still pretty functional, uh, that Kangaroo Mini PC with the four gigs of RAM uh, might be a good alternative, although note you'll have to bring your own Windows license to get it to work. So that's just a little uh, barrier to entry there, but you'll get better support in the long run, which might be a little bit more valuable to you. But if all those concerns are of no concern to you, then this is a pretty good value. $215, you get a nicely performing uh, top end Atom uh, Cherry Trail processor. So it's the top end of the low end, which is good. Lots of storage on that drive, very high performing drive actually. Four gigs of RAM, a really nice little mini PC that actually has some decent industrial design around it also. Not good for home theater buffs, but uh, probably good for casual PC users looking for something cheap but high performing. This is Lon Sybin, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including gold level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.